Huh? Walapo. It can't be Lanzonis, can it? But I love Lanzonis. Relax. Lanzonis is good. We will explain. We chose this cover for a reason. Tell someone the forbidden fruit is not an apple and they already look at you sideways. Why? Well, it is actually a poor assumption repeated over and over erroneously in drawing after drawing after drawing, even in Bibles, and it's wrong. Even the likes of the occult company Apple or Mac shows the bitten apple representing the doctrine of Satan right there in plain sight, yet most don't even see it. You see that with occult companies all the time. Yet, there's not a single scripture which ever says Adam and Eve ate an apple, ever, doesn't exist. This is why we must follow 1 Thessalonians 5.21 to prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Some will not be good, so we throw it out. Simple. It's okay. You can eat the apple. You don't have to throw it out. Well, what's left? Read through the entire modern Bible canon, and there is never a reference to a specific fruit as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's just not there, in which Adam and Eve ate, knew they were naked, and were exiled from the Garden of Eden because of this sin. This is a real story, by the way. You will also find the Hebrew word fruit is, well, uh, fruit, not an aphrodisiac, which is fraud, really, as those peddling, especially the gay and communist agenda, in the Philippines even, would have you believe Adam was the first homosexual. That's disgusting and a lie. And many of you know to what channel we refer, though we won't mention them by name. This is no fairy tale, nor was it figurative. Yes, the Bible does record history as it is written by historic characters. And anyone denying that lives in a world of fantasy themselves. Uh, Peter called it in 2 Peter 3, willing ignorance. And he warned that was going to be prevalent in our era. And we certainly do see that today. Now, we have already proven well that the Garden of Eden resides in the Philippines. And we are not reproving what took many videos and much research and books to prove, as we are keeping this video short, so we can get to the point. If you want to debate that, you're just going to be muted and deleted. So don't even try. Get our books, and we fully prove this and support our case with a 300-page source book and watch our Solomon's Gold series where there is something like 100 videos of much documentation. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is described in Scripture and documented in legends. It was real. It was created by Yahuwah. So the tree itself is not actually evil. But man's breaking the commandment was the actual problem. So let's get to it. What is it? Let's review the evidence and you decide. The book of Enoch 32, 3, and 4 describes Enoch's trip around the world. No, not on an airplane, but he was carried by angels. That's what he says. He describes the world from Mount Sinai, in fact, uh, which is sort of the beginning. He goes even earlier than that, but from Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia toward the east. And then he travels further east. And then he travels further east where Enoch says the Garden of Eden exists. Hmm. Uh, that isn't Africa or the Middle East, is it? Hmm. Let's read. And I came to the Garden of Righteousness. That's the Garden of Eden. And I saw beyond those trees, many large trees growing there, sweet smelling, large, very beautiful and glorious, the trees of wisdom from which they eat and know great wisdom. 
You know what that is. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which the angel will confirm as well. Now, Enoch is in the far east, and he describes this tree. Hmm, let's see. And it is like the carob tree. We'll look at a picture. And its fruit is like bunches of grapes on a vine. But it's a tree. Very beautiful, and the smell of this tree spreads and penetrates afar. Hmm. Okay, so what we have here is a firm description of a tree that appears to look like a carob tree in appearance, but it's not a carob tree. It looks like it because its fruit grows like bunches of grapes on a tree. Hmm. It is beautiful with great aroma. Understand Enoch just finished describing, if you go back, a tree that sounds like a pilly tree in the previous verses, which has a fruit like an almond, but harder. Hmm. Now here's a picture of a carob tree and a Lanzonis tree from the Far East and the Philippines. Notice the branches and the leaves are certainly very similar. Lanzonis most certainly could be appropriately described as growing like bunches of grapes on a tree. See the upper right photo especially. Some have said, well, it could be do hot, but here's where this rules that out, and this really becomes very clear. Check this out. Before you go further, yes, it is okay to eat Lanzonis, and we'll show you how the legend even progressed. And there's a legend. This is really cool. It is no longer, but at one time, Lanzonis was known to be poison. Hmm, really? Well, the word lason, in which Lanzonis originates in Tagalog, actually means poison. Oh, there's far more than just that, though. See, the second definition is an exact match to the forbidden fruit. Not just poison, but poison to morals or mind. Wow. That's right out of the Tagalog dictionary today. Compare that to the Hebrew word lason or lashon, could be S-H or S either, and with its definitions included, essentially it could mean a poison tongue in one reference. Also, uh, could be a reference to the wedge of gold. You mean the golden wedges of Ophir, the land of gold we find in the Philippines? Well, that's what Job describes. Hmm. Interesting, but not enough to draw a conclusion, right? We would agree. Oh, but this gets better. First, the angel Raphael, who is escorting and teaching Enoch, an archangel, in fact, like Michael, tells Enoch this tree is, in fact, the very tree in which Adam and Eve ate and were driven out of the garden because of it. So there is no doubting that is what Enoch is referring to here. But could there be more to this? Oh, there is. In the Philippines, the very land of the Garden of Eden, where Enoch was in this particular time that he's writing. Again, you'll have to review that case if you haven't. Not remaking that here. There is actually a legend of Lanzonis, which fits this. And not just one, but three different legends, which persist and all say essentially the same of Lanzonis, as once being poison, but now purified. Again, it's okay to eat, and we will as often as we can, because Lanzonis are masrap, or in my wife's language, neimas. Reading from The Legend of Lanzonis, from Paete, Laguna, Philippines. How about that? Lanzonis is actually derived from the word lason, see? Which is Tagalog for poison. There was once a time when the pale yellow globes lived up to their sinister name. Hmm. 
The cream-colored clusters were said to have originated from Paete Laguna. They were so poisonous that even the ants on its branches died on the spot. But all that changed when a kindly old man named Mang Silo paused to rest under a shady tree. While passing through the thick Paete forest, only the notorious Lanzoni's trees were nearby. Faint from hunger, Mang Silo fell asleep and dreamt of a beautiful angel who plucked a fruit from the Lanzoni's tree for him to eat. Sensing his reluctance, the heavenly being pinched the tiny fruit to draw out the poison. Mangsilo, awakened to find fruit peelings on the ground next to him. His curiosity and hunger soon overcame his fear of the Lanzonis, and he cautiously peeled one and bit into it. His gamble paid off, and he ended up relishing the fruit's sweet, refreshing taste. In gratitude to the angel who had saved him from hunger, he spread the word that Lanzonis were no longer poisonous, and that the brown spots on its skin were the fingerprints of the benevolent spirit who pinched the poison away. Now, according to ABS-CBN and the Philippine Star, there are two more legends of Lanzonis that persist in Comagan Island, of all places which agree Lanzonis was once considered poison in ancient times, and let's be clear, all say it is purified now and good to eat. Comagan has a unique, sweeter variety of Lanzonis, in fact, if you have not reviewed our Mount of the East videos within Solomon's Gold series, you might want to, because that ties very nicely. It's come again, is extremely significant in this whole story. I know, we're just crazy. But Enoch was not. He physically described a tree with great accuracy that fits legends, which also, not crazy, as they tie to the book of Enoch. And the very word of origin and definition, which is not crazy, but you can call us crazy because we don't care. You have to prove us wrong. And no one has been able to do that in four years now. So one calling us crazy that can't prove us wrong, well, they would be the crazy one. Sorry, but true. All agree the Lanzoni's tree as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We are not saying Lanzoni's is bad in any sense, and in fact, Yahuwah created this tree just like all the others, and everything he created, he certified. Go read Genesis, and it was good, and he saw that it was good, and he saw that it was good. It's there over and over and over. See, that wasn't the problem. The creation was perfect. The problem was man's disobedience and sin. Yahuwah gave him one thing to obey, and he just couldn't. That's pretty much the gist of it. Regardless, it's purified now, but this tree was indeed a match to what we call poison still, Lasson Lanzonis, today. Is all this just coincidence? Well, we were not there never been inside the Garden of Eden, and neither is anyone else commenting here, although we can hear the trolls now. Who cares? We're going to have fun with this anyway. But Enoch was and is still, in fact, in the Garden. Yes, that's what the Book of Jubilees says. Thus, he's the only one qualified to describe it, and no one can argue with him. Don't believe him? Well, that's your choice. We, however, place major importance on the works kept by the temple priests who were exiled from the temple to Qumran, who there kept what they always kept, even in the temple, a scroll library of scripture, or what we would call Bible canon today. 
There is no other authority in that age or really in history as far as a library of those Levite temple priests. And since Messiah was baptized there, because it's also called Bethabara in the Bible, never Qumran, that's a new Muslim name that really shouldn't still even be on there. They should restore it to its biblical name, which they've messed up on purpose. And visited it otherwise. He also reviewed this library himself, the Messiah himself. Now, some try to place the Septuagint in such position of authority, or Josephus, the Pharisee, and Hasmonean, and Essene trained even, he admits, in his own writings. But those weren't the temple priests, and they do not represent the Bible canon of Scripture. Neither of them kept it. Only the Levite priests of Aaron, the sons of Zadok, in which the inhabitants of Qumran call themselves something like a hundred times or more, and never Essenes, which is absolute fraud. Now they kept this book, Enoch 1, not the others, Enoch 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, whatever, and the book of Jubilees, which we are now publishing, were two of the most found scrolls in the library, number three, and number six. So, if you want that full story, get a copy of the book of Jubilees, and in the beginning of that book, we actually uh, divulge all of that research. It's here. The book so many have awaited. No longer just a case on YouTube, but now a 384-page paperback, The Search for King Solomon's Treasure, supported by a 300-page source book of our sources. No one has, nor will they, disprove this case, because King Solomon's navy came to the Philippines, the ancient land of gold known in Hebrew as Ophir, Sheba, and Tarshish, in Greek as Christ, and Argyre, and even mapped as the Philippines, in Latin as Aria, the origin of the chemical symbol for gold, of gold for obvious reason, and oh, ignore the background photos of, well, the wealthiest people of all time, in mass, as a documented part of Ironclad History 1590 Boxer Codex Wow. And even archaeology supports that, and even science, and even language. Now available in the Philippines on OphirInstitute.com and ready to ship. Even available on Shopee, 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 and available internationally on Amazon. Also in the Philippines, not international yet, although we're working on some things for this, we have released this as a 10 by 12 oversized coffee table book, and it is tremendous. We could not be more pleased with the quality printing here in the Philippines, and you will not be disappointed with this masterpiece keepsake for a lifetime and beyond. It's a more brief case with dynamic photography throughout, including larger, full-color maps. Finally, we have published the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar. That's what they called it in Qumran. A 288-page curated version of the R.H. Charles translation of Jubilees with over 100 pages of commentary and a map section including the first map of the world. Yes, Noah's division of the entire earth. Wow. Every believer and anyone interested in history should know this as they will never understand prophecy without it, nor really even ancient geography. And even in modern times, a lot gets explained when you understand this. And it tracks the location of the Garden of Eden to the Philippines. Already available free in ebook, you can download or purchase internationally on Amazon or Shopee Philippines. Just go to bookofjubilees.org for links and you will be amazed at this revelation. Or better yet, buy them all. We offer discount bundles uh, in the Philippines on our channel. 
we have over 250 teachings available free. They remain free and always will be, as we always have said. Buy your books today and preserve this beyond YouTube's censorship, in which you will notice now 98,000 subscribers and yet few are notified by YouTube. Learn this material and we will have more ways to learn coming soon that will help you teach others. Thank you everyone who has watched our videos, purchased books, attended conferences including Daval a year ago with over 5,000 in attendance, shared with others, also for your prayers and support in every way we need it all. Make sure you are still subscribed to our channel because YouTube sometimes, well, <laughs> oops, unsubscribes our viewers as many have informed us. Must just be a glitch, I guess. And we'll leave it at that. Be sure to like us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen space original. And if you cannot, for some reason, as many have told us, they cannot friend us or follow there. In fact, we had that happen in a conference where we said, hey, everybody, take out your phones and go ahead, friend our Facebook page now. And most of the crowd said we can't. Uh, really, Facebook? Well, we'll be talking about that soon. Please let us know. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't to this channel. We are almost at 100,000. Help us get there soon. Yablas to everyone.